So we are entering now the fifth game in the match between the two Stevens. Uh, it is 2-2. Two -two. And they will now play GC as the fifth game. All right. Ben is going to announce this. Welcome to round five, featuring Steven and Steven. So, Steven Morgan has made a comeback here. Gets to play first in GC, but a little long. A bit of an error there. So that he is no longer in offensive position or good defensive position. Mulliner should just be playing towards the boundary. Give himself a straight hoop shot. And a good shot, maximizing the diff distance between his ball and Stephen Ball, minimizing the chance that uh, Stephen Morgan can hit red back towards corner four. Uh, Stephen Morgan, despite playing four games on this lawn, is playing Goldilocks. Too hard, too short. One would hope that the lags to position would be on point four games into the match, but nerves could be playing a part. The loser of this game uh, is awarded $500. The winner of this game uh, could still win the tournament and earn $4,000. Um, at minimum, the winner of this game will walk away with $1,000, even if they lose in the semifinals. So this is a $500 game of golf croquet, where the winner also has the potential for an additional $3,000. So both players are experienced in national championships and even world championships. Mulliner winning the AC Worlds in 2016. And I think uh, at least two McRobs. Stephen Morgan has nine national championships, um, many at this venue. But this is also the venue where Mulliner has won our AC national championship in singles and doubles as well as the World Championship in 2016 he won here against David Maloof. So Mulliner made sure to clear blue and not send it towards the hoop, but it cost red position. S Stephen Morgan was trying to clear black and maintain a hoop shot, which is why he's a little upset that he half-balled yellow. Black cleared yellow, but did not maintain a very good hoop shot. Or it's possible he wanted to cut Stephen Mulliner farther into the corner. Because Mulliner is now having a go at the seven-yard hoop. If he makes it, Red is exempted from being offsides. Great hoop shot. A little bit generous there, the, the hoops. The, the holes set uh, made these hoops a little bit wide. We tried resetting them in the morning, but the holes were already in the ground, so... It's possible that spin through didn't have to be as perfect as at some of the tournaments these players are accustomed to. But with uh, trying to encourage aggressive play, we weren't going to reset the hoops entirely to make it punitive. So a little spin through there won't hurt anybody. And Mulliner's red ball is perfectly legal, having made that position off of blue on his last turn. Stephen Morgan has failed position again, although this time it's maybe not too far, but it did curve right. So it's possible his Goldilocks play of too hard, too soft, and then he hit it just right, but with a little bit of curve to the right, leaving him with a tough angled hoop shot. Although it looks though Mulliner doesn't enjoy, uh, doesn't want to leave that shot for Morgan. He might be able to jaws from there, so he's going to have a go at clearing him. Uh, Stephen Morgan still in control of the hoop, though, the way Red half-balled all the way south of the peg. And here's his second chance to get good position at two. Still curving right, still curving right. Well, didn't really adjust, although uh, he played blue from a different line. He played blue from the left of hoop one, so maybe he, he didn't anticipate the court taking 
both balls to the right when they came from such different lines. But it seems as though while his touch is getting better, the uh, the the hills on this lawn have punished him a bit. Again, you would hope that the lags would be on point, seeing as this is game five on this lawn for these two gentlemen. So Mulliner did not just aim up the hill. He wanted to be outside there, preferably where black cannot see yellow. So yellow has corner control. That means if uh, blue or black set up at the hoop, yellow will have a chance to not only hit them away, but hit them away very far to corner four. So he has the corner side. And Stephen Morgan dribbles through hoop two. So red's clearance was for naught. And uh, I guess yellow should have maybe focused on moving blue. So it is one all, and Stephen Mulliner with great touch there. I think the first hoop that he's been uh, first ball to. So he is one for one as first ball to a hoop, whereas Stephen Morgan, I believe, is 0 for 4 on getting position. Does not bode well for Stephen Morgan, but it hasn't played out in the score just yet. Now Stephen's got, uh, Stephen Morgan has his touch back. He got not only in position with black, but it looks like he's blocking red. And he's relatively close to the hoop, so Red has to play an aggressive cut in order to get Black out of there and not promote it towards the hoop. Steven Mulliner could opt for a jump shot, but that's quite risky. As Black is so close, it looks like he could control his shot all the way down to four if the jump shot were to fail. Even if the jump shot were to succeed, it doesn't seem as though Black would have trouble getting down. That promotion from yellow promoting red may have taken black out of line. That's a great shot from Steven. A great shot in two shot, as some of our spectators noted. But a great shot here in, in traditional GC because he took that block, or at least lessened that block that Steven Morgan had put. So now if Mulliner were to go for the jump, it doesn't have to be as high of a jump. And to clear black, it certainly gives red an easier cut if red was just going to play defense. And Stephen Morgan goes for the clear on red, I believe, or possibly a combo clear, but moves nothing. And we'll see if Mulliner opened up the hoop shot for himself or if he just gave himself a better clearance. All right, so he gave himself a... A chance at a stop shot there. So red was able to stick around. Yellow's in position. So red is there in case black comes back and moves yellow or in case yellow fails to score the hoop. But most importantly, he was able to stop, uh, send black nearly all the way to the south boundary. Whereas had yellow not moved red, it's possible that cutting black to the peg might have been the best red could hope for on that clearance so that little promotion that yellow did not only kept yellow in position but gave red a better clearance we'll see if stephen morgan can hit this nearly 100 footer now off to the right so after all the complications of playing four different new variations of golf croquet both players are probably not going to spend a lot of time thinking and considering different scenarios as they are both very well practiced in traditional golf croquet. They can finally turn off the critical frontal lobes and just focus on the normal tactics they're used to and making the shots. So Stephen Mulliner scores hoop three to go up 2-1 despite Morgan being first to hoop one. Stephen, but only goes halfway down. Stephen Morgan doesn't look like he's blocked red or yellow's hoop shot. Red is not playing a terribly aggressive line of play, just trying to get position there. A uh, little too long, a little angled hoop shot. More importantly, if yellow tries to clear blue, it's possible that red will be a backstop and prohibit blue from being taken to the corner the way that yellow would want. Black is an additional backstop. So it'll be hard to cut blue away from both of those balls. He could probably take away blue's hoop shot on it on most hits. But he managed to get between all the balls there, leaving Stephen Morgan a relatively normal two-yard, slightly angled hoop shot. 
something that these players, uh, especially uh, in these conditions with these hoops, would normally make 90% of the time. But it seems as though Stephen Morgan has other ideas. He really thought the only reason to take that line of play is if you are sure that Blue will stop in front of the hoop. So you can see him shaking his head, talking to himself a little bit. Very upset with his decision there. He was trying to make sure when he did have a hoop shot, it was low risk or no risk. Had Blue missed, Red was right there for a possible hoop shot or clearing of Blue if it was close. A very conservative line to play for Steven that did not pay off. He's, he's got better control, but he's down 2-1 as the blue-black team. He's got control of hoop four. But seven-yard clearances are Stephen Mulliner's bread and butter. So much so that it looks like he's going for a center ball clearance on black just to avoid black attempting the jaws. Oh, he's had a refusal. If you're watching at home, this is a good time to take a drink. He's... Reconsidered twice now. Second refusal. Drink again. It still looks like he's going to hit black, just trying to hit at a moderate pace so that his ball sticks around. He really needs to center ball it. Great shot. Not only does he clear black from any, uh, from a, the relatively easy jaws or highly possible jaws, but he stayed in position. The problem is blue has a bit of good position on red. As long as black doesn't interfere. Oh no, the auto block. You might have a better angle than I to see if blue can sneak by black or not. There's a chance blue could block red on the hoop or block red on clearing black. But it's possible that blue cannot see red at all without a bit of a jump. So while uh, Stephen Morgan had two balls close to the hoop, Stephen Mulliner might be taking control where he could earn a hoop shot. I believe Mulliner's trying to get wired from Blue with that uh, yellow ball, making sure that if Blue or Black were to hit yellow, a stop shot would not leave Blue or Black in position. And yes, Stephen Morgan is trying to sneak past Black to block Red's shot. Doesn't, from my angle, it, it looks like he might just barely be encroaching on Red's hoop shot. And from your angle with the camera, or Mulliner's angle with his press-up position, you can tell if he has a shot at black or not. Looks like he must have a good portion of black to be trying this shot. He hopes to not put black in the hoop, but he might carry him off towards five. Oh, he was able to get so much of black, he caromed off towards the hoop. That's a great shot. Had he uh, gotten in the jaws of the hoop, he would have claimed very good control of the match. Jaws of four, with yellow having a chance to clear blue and progress to five off of blue. So Stephen Morgan looking to clear yellow, avoiding any uh, jawsing attempt. Maybe it was a combo. The way he center balled red, or maybe there was a bit of a double. I don't quite have the angle. A good center ball hit was not what he was looking for. He was either trying to just miss red and hit yellow, or hoping for a combo shot where red would have moved yellow. Now Steven does the press up before angled hoop shots, and sometimes before any hoop shots. Uh, You'll see him do them on close straight ones just to make sure he's lined up to miss the near stanchion as he did there. Three to one despite being red-yellow. Mulliner is in great control of this match. Steven's going to need to uh, probably make five all the way down to six. And Steven Morgan will have to make five all the way down to six in order to stay in this. Blue's a little past straight in front, but it's a good jawsing position. Mulliner has gotten close enough that he could jump it, though. So Stephen Morgan might not go for the jaws. He could go for the clear here as a preventative measure. Or he could try to lag into straight position, possibly blocking yellow's clearance on blue. Looks like he's going for a clear. 
good center ball clear, and he, he managed to avoid either ball moving blue, which would have made blue's angle a much tougher shot. So now Stephen Mulliner has the pressure of the eight-yarder. This is a very makeable shot, but missing it puts you so far to the side that it's more difficult to get position at six. This is a, a shot that uh, many have benefited from their opponents banking on. So Mulliner, however, a great hit. His red ball could have attempted the clearance on blue, and then he would have, had he missed, he would have had a second chance with yellow, but... He wagered that blue, yellow would definitely hit blue, and that wager paid off, at least in the fact that blue is playing the position and not for the hoop. They've both hit a uh, six to eight yard clearance there. And now the hoop resets with yellow scattered a bit far off, so Mulliner needs to hit this to keep blue from jawsing or scoring. And now black can take good offensive position, and blue will have the option of clearing red to the south boundary. At the moment, red does not have a hoop shot. So clearing red to stretch out this five-yard clearance to a eight-yard clearance uh, could really cost Stephen Morgan because it, it might also put red in position to score the hoop. With yellow there, though, Stephen Morgan has a perfect spot on the south boundary where he would love to put red, where yellow is blocking red's shot on both the clearance and the hoop. He made the cut. Let's see if it gets there. Stephen Mulliner, Johnny on the spot, and I would wager that red is blocked on the hoop and might even be hampered a little bit on the clearance. That was a great cut from Stephen Morgan to minimize uh, the risk of Stephen Mulliner hitting this. Uh, he could hit to clear black, and then Morgan will still have an opportunity. Ah, as you see, yellow was in the way, at least a little bit. So red hit yellow, and despite caroming off a ball down towards six, red is still off sides because he caromed off partner. So here's where Stephen Morgan has a chance to get back in the game. If he runs five all the way down to six, misses the peg. Oh, just glances off the peg, but great shot. He has, he has good control. Red's offside and has been told to go west go west short man and play from the penalty spot penalty uh, crescent semicircle arc <laughs> whatever you want to call it these days it's no longer a spot semicircle. and the semicircle i'm being told and you see yellow a little bit of hill there again you would hope that these players know some of the hills by now um maybe there's not as much direct lagging uh, as in, in uh, the other games, as there's in traditional GC, because you see that yellow fell victim to a bit of a hill right there, which opens up black's clearance. And Stephen Morgan with a great approach with blue to what looks like one foot position, and the hill pulled him closer to the hoop rather than taking him offline. So whether he was just aimed for a uh, you know, four foot position and he hilled in, or whether he knew the hill and played it to there, it's a great result where black stands to clear yellow and take control of this hoop with two balls close to the hoop. Unless Mulliner, from the semicircle, can clear that blue ball. An in-off here would give him a good chance at the match. So that's not all bad for Mulliner. Um, he was looking at a situation where had he not moved blue or yellow, black was going to put yellow somewhere near corner four with a stop shot where black might have still been blocking yellow's attempt at a hoop or a clearance. So that was unfortunate, but certainly not the worst result of that 13 yard clearance where Mulliner at least preserved this shot. Um, Stephen Morgan did not choose to go after yellow as it was already eight yards away from blue. He chose to get two balls in position. Um, I don't think he went for any sort of interference of yellow's clearance. He's just hoping for a miss here so he can level the game at a three all. But Stephen Mulliner with another gentle center ball clearance. Uh, no doubt practiced in two shot and three shot. That gentle eight yarder that leaves yellow in position uh, is going to be a lot more common in this GCA, GC game than in most GC events because they've played the other games where caroming off a ball to position is paramount. So hopefully... They are much better at it, as you've seen, uh, as evidenced by Mulliner's excellent clearance to position. And Morgan's found his touch. 
Looks like he got a block, or at least close to it. You might know better than I with the camera angle. So Mulliner has to know whether he should clear black or not, or clear blue. Hard to tell from here, but both black and blue look like they have a shot. Blue seems to be the easier shot, but black plays next. Good center ball clearance. Not gentle enough to stay in position, but that shot, he was very much trying to focus on black getting distance away from yellow. So now Stephen Morgan will have a 13-yarder here to see if he can yeah, clear yellow and preserve blue's position. Uh, a quick look there to tell if yellow's blocked on the hoop or not. If yellow's blocked on the hoop, it's possible Stephen could choose to just play into position, have two balls in position, force Mulliner to jump, or continue to clear. Uh, and then the wager would be that Mulliner doesn't clear and stay in position. But no, he, he didn't like two balls in position. He just It's possible yellow has a clean shot, which is why he needed to hit at yellow. So Morgan, far, far away farther than the penalty semicircle. So whether uh, yellow or blue, if either of them make this hoop, black will be having a tough time to get all the way back into play at seven. I would assume Milliner's going for the hoop, but we shall see. No. Caught blue. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think... That was his intention. Had Blue been off to the side more, he might have gone for a stop shot. But hitting a half ball or less than half ball of Blue is an extremely conservative choice, which is why I'm guessing it was just uh, missing his line on the hoop. So now Morgan is going to buy some time here. Hopefully uh, he's intending for Blue to be wired from yellow. And that way, if Stephen Mulliner grabs position, he will be taken away by Blue shortly. So Mulliner might be trying to adjust Blue. Take it out of position and hopefully staying in position himself. A great shot. Again, the benefits of two shot and three shot on <laughs> Stephen Mulliner with these gentle clearances that leave him in ideal hoop running position. That clearance means yellow has an opportunity to protect red with a six yard open shot on blue that I don't think it had a moment ago. And red still ended up in perfect position at the hoop. The only thing uh, Mulliner will have to be afraid of is black clearing red or yellow clearing blue and having one of the balls dislodge red. Stephen Morgan has a chance at an in-off with uh, a good Roque here. Great Roque. He sticks around near hoop six. Does not get the fortunate uh, in-off, as is the risk with Red being so close to the hoop there. So now Mulliner has taken deep position to make uh, possibly wire blue, or at the very least to make it harder for blue to stop shot into position. See if blue goes for just a tight block, maybe wired from red in position, and then hoping that black will be able to clear yellow. So if Mulliner likes yellow's hoop shot, we might see red go at black, despite the fact that black is not in position at the hoop. So black currently has a 4-5 yarder. Mulliner would like that to be more like 24-25 yarder. He put a little too much muscle on that and seemingly pulled it to the right. Now Mulliner is looking at a, a long approach to 7, if all goes well for Morgan. Morgan left with the 4-5 yarder. Doesn't really need a stop shot, but wants to get center ball on yellow to stretch that shot out. Wants to avoid moving blue, so he caught a little right of center of yellow so that his black ball didn't carry him off to the left and possibly dislodge partner. So instead of cutting yellow down to corner four for maximum you know, distance, he, he, he just center balled it, little right of center, and that way... He had very little chance of uh, hurting his own partner's position. Well, Mulliner doing some uh, gardening. 
moving the the culvert there, the uh, redecorating. redecorating. Yeah, so those hoops would be more for garden croquet, or in this case, holding down uh, a big tube that stops the balls from going across all twelve of these fine lawns when we have a big, powerful shot and miss. So Mulliner ha- now has a chance in, in off if he can catch right of center. Goes for the gentle Roque. Maybe uh, arguably too much two shot and three shot, but it hit, so hard to argue with results. He dislodged blue from position, and he stuck around. Maybe not wired from black, but certainly a long distance from black. We'll see if Morgan can reset here. That should buy Mulliner time to get Red back involved. So Red isn't going to seven anymore, um, but Red can get back to six with a 23-yard lag rather than having to hit a ball or shoot the hoop from this distance. So Morgan did not just overhit position. I believe he was going for the crosswire so that yellow cannot clear blue, and so he'll have defensive position here. And Mulliner gets a chance to bring Rad, Red back into the fold. So having missed the seven-yard clearance of black, he had to hit the 13-yard clearance of blue to get this opportunity to fight for hoop six. He's still up 3-2. 4-2 would allow him to just trade hoops till the end. See that curve right? Again, there at hoop six, there's some court features And that gives Blue a great clearance opportunity on Red, although Red is not a threat to score, I don't believe. But that would protect Black. So Black has taken position, angled hoop position. I believe he was trying to wire from Yellow, but it doesn't look like he got there. Yellow going for a stop shot clearance. Oh no, Yellow was going for Blue, so Blue hadn't gotten wired. So now Black has a hoop shot. Red has a good stop shot, so blue could clear red, possibly stretch out red's clearance shot to uh, 10, 12 yards with a cut. Well, maybe more than 12 yards with a cut, but 10 or 11 yards if he puts it anywhere on the north boundary. Or Morgan could go for the gusto. He could go for the hoop. He could just put two balls in position, force yellow to clear. So... It's not going to be too aggressive. The The trick there is to not give Mulliner an opportunity to clear both balls. Mulliner uh, could flick off the black ball and hope his ball center balls blue. He might just stop shot black and hope to block blue. Ah, see, he got the flick off towards blue. Didn't quite center ball it, but certainly made blue's shot much tougher and uh, avoided having to clear blue with yellow. I don't think blue's in an impossible position but looks like a 45-degree, four-yard hoop shot. So Stephen Morgan coming back to position with Black. And then Blue, he's hoping Blue just has to play defense. If Black doesn't get position, Blue might have to shoot that hoop. He's got a good shot. Less chance of the in-off with Black on the left side of the midline there. With red and yellow on the right side of straight in front of six, had black been straight in front or right of center, that might have given a chance at an in-off. Yellow looks to be a bit short, although jawsable. Stephen Morgan looking to put red on the sideline, force Mulliner into another 13-yarder. Oh, very disappointed in that one. You can see his head came up, not just when he realized he had missed, but I think before he was able to see the miss. Teddy Prentice used to say, you keep your head down or you don't like what you see. In that case, I think Morgan saw it and he he wished he had just kept his head down. So Mulliner could be going for the hoop. It's a bit aggressive, but it would put him up 4-2. Or he might just be clearing black. There's a good opportunity to clear black to a spot where it can't see yellow. And yellow, while angled, has a very makeable shot. Good center ball clearance. Uh, he didn't go for very hard. He must have been trying to go with the most accurate shot to put red, uh, put black where it couldn't see yellow. He had the opportunity with a harder shot to possibly put red closer to seven, uh, with the weakness of that being that black could just choose to hit red, and then black would be on sides as well. It looks like Stephen Morgan is very wired from yellow, so he's basically just getting rid of red so red doesn't have good position at seven. 
And he man- managed to maintain a hoop shot here. So if something goes horribly wrong with Mulliner's hoop shot, Black is still there, able to possibly shoot or jump hoop six. Yeah, that's quite an angle. So you'll see press up position again, trying to make sure he sees down the right side of yellow. will just miss the right stanchion. And that way with a little spin or good bounce off the backboard, he could go in the hoop. No such luck. So Mulliner, all of that wagering with uh, hitting a, a good shot with red and does not capitalize on the hoop shot. So still 3-2 for Mulliner. And now blue didn't get very good position. We might see black try to capitalize off this shot. Oh, my goodness. Mulliner overhits it into the jaws. Better to be lucky than good. And if you're going to overhit it, you better be aimed straight at it. So now we'll see Morgan going for the jump. All right. So he must have liked uh, Black's hoop position. Also, Blue is not much of a threat to knock Red out. Good height. Didn't put Red through. So there was no large cost to that play. But going down 4-2, and now Mulliner has a chance to go halfway to the next hoop or set himself up for a promotion. No, it looks like he's worried that Blue has a chance to take red out of the hoop. So he's just going to clear blue, make that little no chance for Morgan. Morgan now probably just lagging to halfway. Because there's uh, several of our variations of golf croquet don't have offsides, uh, we don't have any markers out there. So Morgan just going by experience. And Stephen Mulliner scores after a fortunate jawsing to go ahead 4-2 in the deciding game here. Stephen Morgan coming up short, but Blue is in position for a promotion. But you can see him shake his head. There's, again, this is their fifth game on this court. So while he's been fighting his touch in this game, he was probably hoping to uh, be able to just lag balls into one-yard position by now, especially from... Eight yards. It was unfortunate. He's promoted, though, into great shape. But that prevented him from uh, playing a blocking shot or getting two balls into position. The pressure here on Mulliner, but up 4-2, there's not a whole lot of pressure. He just doesn't want Morgan to be able to make seven down to eight and possibly level it. Mulliner taking some care on this one. But misses. Hard to tell if he was right or left of the target. I would, I would guess by lifting the left leg, meaning he wanted it to go left. But hard to tell from this angle. Stephen Morgan certainly hoping to go all the way down to eight. Probably doesn't want a Jaws, as Red has a chance to knock that ball out and Yellow has a chance to jump it. A good smooth hoop shot all the way down to eight. This could get the match back to level. Great shot. Got maybe a three, four yard hoop shot. It's going to put a lot of pressure on red. Mulliner could try to hit black with that shot, but I guess he's going to trust, put all his trust in red. You often see that when it's an eight yard clearance, but this is a, a 20 yard clearance. And Mulliner had an opportunity to go for two 20 yard clearances and only... Uh, needing to hit one, but he's he's decided he's just going to bank it all on red hitting this clearance or black missing the hoop. We'll see how, how much disrespect he has for his opponent if he just lags to position and attempts a block. We have some club members making their way to the far courts. Yep. So Mulliner, I guess, was going for some sort of block, but managed to hit Black, unless he was trying for a gentle dislodge. Seems as though Black still has the hoop shot here, so Black might get two points in two shots. 
But no, he's decided on clearing yellow. Don't know if he was blocked or not. I don't think yellow had much of a play towards hoop eight with blue right there. And the the local club members seemingly have yet to learn that walking on a court while people are playing for hundreds of dollars is very rude. Maybe somebody will help teach them. If only they had a pro who could teach them such things as to not walk on other people's lawns while they're playing tournaments. Anyway, uh, Mulliner gets a nice seven-yard clearance there, so it's possible Morgan should have gone for the jump or whatever hoop shot opportunity he was left. We kind of reset here with Yellow scampering back down to seven, and Stephen Morgan an off-center hit, but Blue stays close enough to play defense. Now Mulliner will take control of the hoop, although Morgan's got two balls close to Mulliner's one, but Morgan might not be able to hit red with black, so that would uh, leave Morgan one chance at the clearance on red. Well, the way he's swinging, it doesn't look like it's blocked. Oh, good center ball hit, slightly left to center, so his black ball stays straight in front of the hoop, albeit at five yards. Clears red to eliminate that threat, and in fact, put red in a position that blue can really send it far. Uh, previously, blue could only hit red to the sideline about seven yards away. Now, if blue wanted, he could expend uh, you know all of his efforts and put red back in corner two or north boundary. Uh, he's decided to just get two balls in position, as Mulliner did not get yellow in position. So there wasn't wasn't a huge risk here. If Mulliner moves black, yellow does not stand to immediately score. Mulliner plays red, a little off center there. But he wanted to make sure to move black at least three yards to take it to a more than 45 degree angled hoop, which he has done. But now black has an opportunity to clear yellow. Looks like there's a enough room there between blue and the hoop for black to center ball yellow. Now he can get yellow to the east boundary. He might go halfway to the next hoop. Oh, no, he's just snicked off of it. So good position towards nine for black, but did not do enough to yellow. So this is probably not going to help. So Mulliner has just a three-yard clearance. Possible in off, but he's more likely to just go for a center ball clearance. He might do a nice gentle shot like he would do in two shot. So he stays in position and eliminates Blue's position. But he doesn't want Blue to have a good stop shot on him. So he's gone moderate pace. Make sure the separation there so Blue can't just stop shot yellow and stay in position. And yet another reset here. So 4-3 for Mulliner in game five of the match. These corner hoops can be long battles. Yeah, instead of going to position where he would worry about getting knocked away, Stephen, is, uh, Stephen Morgan has cleared a ball that was not in position, but he did it so well, center balled, that he maintained a hoop shot and got yellow 14, 16 yards away. Mulliner trying to block blue and get tight position. Uh, where Mulliner stopped makes me think that that's in line with hoop six. So it's makeable, but it certainly didn't block blue. So now Stephen Morgan doesn't have to move red. He can wait and let blue do that, but he really wants to make sure he doesn't block blue's clearance on red. So he has just lagged a position where he's not in blue's way. Blue still has a hoop shot, but at that distance, five, six yards, it might be prudent to just clear red. Oh, and Mulliner's given him a, a chance to clear both. I don't know if he'll aim at yellow, because yellow being in front means he'd have to just barely hit yellow if he wanted to move red significantly. This might be enough to hamper red's shot. So if red can't score the hoop, and if yellow is uh, because of yellow blocking the mallet, and if red can't clear black because of yellow blocking that shot, blue might just go for the hoop. He's looking for it, and he nails it for all. Morgan capitalizing on an unfortunate cuddle shot. Uh, takes the risk, and it pays off for all. So now, effectively, with that comeback, Morgan has brought it back to where trading hoops... Uh, 
can still win it for Steven. But Steven failed position with the first shot. Mulliner failed position with the first shot. So this game just basically got back to a 50-50. If Mulliner had gotten position at that hoop, I would have said it's still a coin toss win advantage as the first ball to the hoop, if it can get position, uh, stands a very good chance of winning that hoop, or at least a better chance. But with red failing position, I'd say this is a this hoop is a toss up, which means the whole match, five hundred to thirty five hundred dollars comes down to a best three out of five, GC game. These are all the thoughts you try to quiet in your head when you're playing, but as you're not playing, you might appreciate the stakes. Blue trying to get position where red can't clear it, trying to use yellow as a blocker. And black has the opportunity to clear yellow, or black could go for the hoop from there. Red does not have a hoop shot, but red could try to block black. He might be going for a cuddle. Ooh, GC rules fun. There he's going to mark black, because if he were to touch black on this shot, then... He would become an outside agency, I believe. So to maintain the opportunity of interfering with black, he wants to have black marked as it's an outside agency. Then he can play his shot, and if he encroaches in black's area, uh, I think black gets placed in contact with red, uh, which would make Stephen Morgan's shot difficult. It's possible Stephen Mulliner knows his rule better than I. But for whatever reason, I do know if he were to play at black and hit it, he would become an outside agency, which would mean Stephen Morgan could move red while he plays black's turn. So Mulliner trying to avoid that by marking black, playing the shot, then replacing black. So there's no chance that he, uh, that he becomes an outside agency unless he went out of bounds. Boo! <laughs> In a, a throwback to Keith Wiley... Mulliner carefully places the ball in bounds and then kicks it. <laughs> but I think he had left the marker down, so we have an accurate position. See if Morgan going for the hoop shot or the clearance. I would guess the clearance, because yellow has a chance to get all the way down to 10 if left there. Good clearance shot all the way past the peg. S Morgan maintains a shot towards 10. Uh, marking black avoids... The rule is if... if Red plays towards black and touches it. Red becomes an outside agency, and then black can move red and have it off court when he plays. But if he marks black and he comes to within black's area where he would have hit it, and he's encroaching in black's area, black is placed in contact. I'm not sure if it's Mulliner's choice or Morgan's choice, but it's in contact with red, I think. And that would still be hampering black. So... On the off chance that he got within an inch of the boundary, he didn't want to touch black. He wanted uh, and become an outside agency. He wanted to be, uh, you know, a half ball in court or a ball in court, so that then when you put black back, it's totally interfered with. So Mulliner tries to hit from the pegs about 17 yards, a relatively gentle stroke, and misses. Stephen Morgan trying to make this a 3 0 run, and he does. Three hoops in a row to go up 5-4. Oh, 4-2. Yeah, so four hoops in a row. No, three hoops in a row. Was it 3-1? It wasn't 4-1. Yeah, it was 3-2, 4-2. So three hoops in a row for Morgan to pull ahead here. You see Mulliner falling victim to a little bit of left-to-right curvature there. Good pace, but off-center now. Tough angle. So Mulliner is going to have a bit of an angled shot. Morgan gets a straighter shot a little deeper, but I don't really love that position because if Red chooses, he can stop shot black to corner one and still have a hoop shot. I think maybe Morgan might have been better to go very close to the hoop or to the right of Red, or if he's really trusting Blue to hit Red, he should have just gone closer to the hoop. Black might have had a better opportunity if he... Maybe he was trying to block Red. But he didn't block red. Now we're looking at yellow might be blocking both red and black. So that's what Morgan's going to walk up and check. You know what? I'm just going to call him Roy. It's his first name, whether he tells you that or not. So 
from now on, Stephen, for these last four hoops, refers to Stephen Mulliner. So Roy up there looking to see if Black has a hoop shot. If Black doesn't have a good hoop shot, then clearing red doesn't really benefit him nearly as much, especially if red is blocked. Clearing red uh, doesn't benefit him a whole lot. We'll see if he could just go for the double of yellow in the hoop. Uh, he's decided to go for red and missed it on the right. So up 5-4. Mulliner is going to have... Stephen Mulliner is going to have a nice stop shot here to have two balls in front. Mulliner being down 5-4, we might see him cut black to the south boundary, try to sneak over to 11 a little early. There it is. A little sneak, a little bit past halfway maybe, but certainly closer to 11 than blue or black will be. And now Roy, Stephen Morgan here, has a, a long double target where he can, he can kind of aim between yellow and the hoop. It's possible he hits the right stanchion and bounces away from the hoop. But at this distance, probably... This is probably 89, 90 feet. He could hit yellow and go off. He could miss yellow to left and go in. Uh, but it curves right. No chance at that double. So Mulliner's going to level it here at 5. And Mulliner will have two balls closer to 11 than Morgan does. Yeah, it's hard to call him Roy. I'm trying. Mulliner dribbles through, so he's closer to 11 for any clearance opportunities. The only risk of that is that uh, by not going all the way to the north boundary, he leaves it so that Roy there, if, if he wanted to, black could clear yellow very far away. But Roy, knowing that red was going to clear a good position blue, Roy plays a defensive blue, and Mulliner goes for a block, it seems. And now blue has an opportunity to clear red. And thankfully, black's in great position. So if yellow doesn't change things here, I see blue clearing red to the east boundary, and blue might carry him down towards 12. So it is five all, and Mulliner really needs to hit black or blue here if he's playing aggressive. Blue playing next is the immediate threat, although not a threat to score, I don't think. And he's cleared blue, the immediate threat, so he's, he's left black in position, but made Stephen's clearance of red a lot more difficult. Stephen Morgan. I believe so. If red was not in position, I, I think he would have cleared black just because you're not uh, protecting red if red's play is just to clear black when you could just clear black. Uh, he could cut out the middleman. Stephen Morgan misses. Looks like not by much. He was on for some portion of that. He was confident halfway there. And now, yeah, it looks like it's less than a 30-degree angle. Mulliner trying to go up the all-important sixth point, go up 6-5. But with this opportunity, he'll even go to try to get all the way down to 12. See if he can have more than just the advantage of being first ball to 13. He's first ball to 12. So 6-5 for Mulliner. After uh, losing three in a row, he's made two in a row. Oh, and Roy trying to thread the needle there. Bounces off the hoop. It's actually not horrible. Had uh, had Roy managed to get one yard position, Mulliner would stop shot it away. So six yards away from red, it's possible red doesn't get center ball when clearing black. And it's possible that yellow or blue could block red from clearing black. But it doesn't look like either ball is much of a threat to score. Here comes yellow. Great pace, little short. Little, little to the side, but a very makeable angled shot. Let's see if Blue's going for a clearance here. Is he clearing red, yellow? No, nope, nothing. Looks like he was trying to clear red. Problem is, I don't know if red is very jawsable, so had he hit the left side of red, he might have given Mulliner the game and the match by promoting him into position. He hit it hard enough that that was not likely, but possibly an unnecessary shot there. Uh... Had he hit red, he might have made red's shot on black a little longer. 
But having not moved blood red at all, it looks like Mulliner's trying to cozy into the hoop. Now, Stephen Morgan's best hope here is that this bounces back and gives Black an in-off opportunity. If he gets in the jaws, at least Morgan has a ball on the south boundary that could knock that out. But Black is not in a very good jumping position. And uh, it, it's possible. It looks like more than 45 degrees, but Mulliner's made these before. We'll see. For the match, he's bounced back, but not to a easy in-off position. I have seen balls spin off of this, but it's also red is not very hittable from blue's position. So Stephen Morgan clearing, clearing yellow would give blue a really tough shot. Looks like he's going for the jump, not the spinning in-off. He's going for the tough angle jump for some money or a chance at the money. Got height, but missed everything. See if Mulliner goes for the rush peel. Yep, you can see that's Mulliner's cut rush uh, preparation. He puts his finger on the ground where he wants the center of yellow to go. The rush peel for the win. <laughs> Stephen Mulliner surviving a late rally by Stephen Morgan. Roy Stephen Morgan tied for fifth there. Uh, and Mulliner will now have to face... GC world champ Matthew Essek in the semifinal. So Stephen Mulliner winning 3-2 with a score of 7-5 in game five.